So the last time we updated you guys, we were in Indiana. Um, I think we had just put our house on the market and we still didn't have a place to live. So we've done amazing at sitting down and keeping y'all in the loop. So when we first moved here about a little over two months ago, we kept saying, cause we had 14 days of quarantine. We kept saying, let's make a video. Let's update. Let's make a video. And it never happened. So two and a half months late, how are we doing in paradise? I don't know, how are we doing? <laughs> That's good. We are living, so we have a house. Okay, so we sold our house in Indiana, super quick, such a blessing. We lived with our best friends for five weeks. We had nine children. A lot of children. We had a gaggle of children in the house and it was amazing. We made it. We flew over to Kauai. Um, we found this super cute painting at a thrift store. It's my favorite and it will be coming back with us. And we found this wonderful rental that we signed a lease on for a year. And so we rented it sight and seen. Thankfully, we had a friend here that was able to come drive by to make sure it actually existed. And so we are putting down roots in this rental. We have never as a couple rented together. We've only been home owners. And so that's been um, a new exciting challenge. Um, and this is also like a little over 900 square feet. And so going from a house that had how much? 22, 23. 22, 2300 square feet to a little over 900 is very different. We- And wonderful. Yes. Do it. We are learning, but I will say, I am loving the smaller size. Um, it helps when you have outside space yes. and outside time and you can be outside. Year even. round. Yeah. I, I think that's been one of the most freeing things for me is having less clutter and stuff. When we came over in February and stayed at a really beautiful condo for a week, it was like white walls and just simple living. And then we came back into our Indiana house and it's amazing how much mind clutter is created when you have a lot of stuff. And we had been at the house for nine and a half years and so it's really easy to just gain things like, oh, maybe we'll use this later. We had a cast iron tub that we were hoping for like a future farmhouse that we ended up just selling. Um, and so I think the process of us moving and like clearing out and really figuring out what do we need to live? What do we, what do we really want um, has been good. And so coming over here, the house was unfurnished and so starting from scratch, which we'd never done as a couple, because when I met Adam, he owned a house and had it already furnished and had everything. And so it's just been a, um, a really good calming experience. Like I feel at peace here and not constantly overwhelmed feeling like there's always something to do, always something to pick up, something to clean. Um, we're, we try to be fairly clean and orderly, and that's subjective, obviously. There's different degrees of that, but this has just made it a whole lot easier and just simple. It's it's amazing. There's something in even Christendom that says, get as much as you can for as little as possible. Mm -hmm. And you're raised with this idea that uh, if you're gonna be a good steward of your money, then you are to get as much as you can for as little as possible. But that's not the gospel. That's not what Jesus talks about. That's not anywhere in scripture. Um, and so, you know, coming, uh, trying to come away from that um, and just live simply and just really simplify. And well, we don't, yeah, we could have multiple mm -hmm. pairs of this and multiple pairs of that and multiple things of this. And there's lots of people on the island that have 
multiple this, this, and this. So we are trying to continue to live as simply as possible. And what do we need? Do we really need this many plates? Well, this many pieces of cookware? Yeah. No. Do we really need this, this, and this? No. Well, doesn't that make life easier? Not necessarily. Release the overwhelm. And that's something that we've also, so we sold our house. We um, thankfully were able to make money on our house because we, in, in a sense, flipped it just over nine and a half years. Um, it wasn't necessarily our intention. We, but, bought it, we bought it, it was really dated, and we bought it at a really good price. Right. And then the property values went up, plus we did a lot of remodeling and updates, which increased the value. Um, and so we sold it, and so now we're in this state of, um, we have the house money in the bank, and now we're at a place of having to make choices of, okay, so we move over here and we buy a couch, or we buy a car, or we buy, and really have had to work through, it's not so much like, well, do we have it in the bank? Well, yeah, but um, like, do we have permission to get this? Is like, is the Lord giving us permission for this? And trying to figure out how to make these decisions in a different way, wisely, well, currently, Ali's working, um, but we're both kind of self-employed, so there's no steady stream of income. I'm working, but not very much right now. I'm trying to get some odd jobs here, and I'm working about once a week at this point. Um, so we're not making any sort of money that can sustain us at all. It's just trying to get it going. So we're living all off of that um, savings or all off of that which we didn't have any savings, just off the profit is what I'm trying to say. Off the profit of the house, um, this isn't a very good plan, um, you know, from a financial standpoint, uh, and financial advisors would not advise this method and this plan. Um, so we're not doing this for financial reasons, but um, hopefully we'll get some more steady stream of income, but it's been really challenging to make those decisions on how do you, well, how much do you spend on this? How much do you spend on a couch or a table? Or how much do you spend on, well, what is a need and how much do you spend on that? Can you afford $10,000 for a car? Or can you afford 5,000? Or can you afford 15? I mean, when you have more than that in the bank, how do you make those decisions? And so we've really had to pray about it and say, what do, what do we sense the Lord has given us permission to do? Which may sound odd to some of you. Um, but actually, we've been practicing that a while back, I many years back, before this even came on the radar. Just, just because th there's a, there's a, just because you have money to do something doesn't mean that you should do it. Just because you have enough money to buy a multi-million dollar home or a hundred thousand dollar car doesn't mean that you should or that you can. And we are not proponents of debt. We don't agree with debt. We have been in debt, uh, we've been out of debt, we've been back in the debt for various reasons. Um, and, you know, the, it's, it's more of, I, I believe better is, what is the Lord calling us to do? And then we do that by faith. The Lord just reminded me that we're there to sow and pour into this community. He has called us here to pour into this community and that is physically, emotionally, and financially. People probably think we're loaded with um, <laughs> some of the that's, things that we're doing. That's one of but... the questions, the most asked questions I get from people, um, especially through like Instagram, is what do you guys do for work? And I really think they're asking, how do you guys live there? How, how do you, you have doing? so much money? We don't. Yeah. Well, and I think too, real like remembering, not realizing, but remembering that this money is his. Yeah. And so, all of it. And so we either not believe just 10%, that, right? Not just the ten percent. All of it. All of this is. We believe that, or we don't. And so, you know, I was listening to. Um, I was doing some personal development the other day, and it was some financial guru people who, like, what they were saying is wisdom and right on. Um, but they were literally explaining everything we were doing as like the what not to do. 
And I started getting really discouraged, just like, oh my gosh, Lord, here we are. We're gonna screw this up. Cause that's, that's one thing I've been struggling with over the last couple months. Well, I guess we've only been here too, but just I like almost feeling like the shoe's gonna drop. We're like, something's gonna go wrong. We're gonna lose all of our money. We're gonna waste it, um, but not in like the good sense of waste, like biblically, but just like foolishly waste it. Um, and so I'm listening to these financial people talking of, you know, all the like plan ahead and save and this and that and yes. But the we're, we're living for the Lord's economy and his world and not the world's. And so as I was listening to them and starting to feel really discouraged and foolish again, just remembering that um, his, his view is turned upside down. So if almost that like, so if they're saying do this, if the world is saying do this and we're doing the opposite, <laughs> Um, because we really believe the Lord has called us to do this, then I need to be encouraged by that. But man, it's really difficult to stay in this situation, knowing that there's a good amount of people thinking we're foolish. Um, and, and yet we have a number of really good family and friends that cheer us on that when we start to get discouraged and like, what are we doing here? We just need to come home. We're wasting our money. Um, like this was just all on us or, you know, whatever. We have those friends to encourage us and to speak truth over us and um, to spur us on. And and they know us. I want to touch on one more thing with uh, money. You know, a lot of times uh, the Crown Financial and Dave Ramsey, they give a lot of very good biblical financial wisdom and I would absolutely say that you should follow yes. those biblical um, precepts and guidelines because there's there's a lot that the Lord lays out and that's wonderful and that's for the majority of situations but there's times that the Lord calls different people to different things at different times and different seasons and I'm not saying this is forever or for you but don't take our situation right. and uh, and um, apply it to yeah. your situation to justify something that you want to do. Yeah. Um, but you look at you look at the book of Hosea. The Lord called Hosea to marry Gomer and um, the prostitute and continue to take her back. But the Lord doesn't call everyone to marry prostitutes and take them back continually. He doesn't. He doesn't do that. Um, and so you look at various stories in the Bible and you see some unique and, and specific times that the Lord calls people to do. Uh, he called Ezekiel to make bread over human poop. And he said, can I make it over cow poop? And he said, sure. So there's some goofy things that you find in there where the Lord calls specific people to do specific things at certain seasons. And so right now, this is where, where we are. We also... I'm a big fan of um, George Mueller, and he has an autobiography that's excellent. It's an autobiography by way of just his journal entries, and so it can be a little bit uh, laborious because it's just journal entries, and, uh, but it's also wonderful to get to see his heart being poured out and his thoughts and various things. And um, Yeah, so a little bit of the George Mueller of just, hey, if this is really what the Lord is doing and calling, then... He will continue to lead and provide. And we've seen that in our life, whether it's money coming in or just items coming in or whatever it is. Um, and so... Or encouragement. Or encouragement. Yeah. And so uh, that's just been really exciting and uh, for our kids to see. And um, they're growing and learning in that as well. Uh, there have been a number, uh, a few people that have said, hey, we want to support you financially. But just that their heart is there... Uh, it says so much more than the than the dollar amount. The just the heart that's there has been so encouraging. So whether it was a small amount or a large amount, the amount makes no difference. It's just um, it's another way for to communicate that they, they are with us, and um, it's been really encouraging and helpful. And we just love them. Um, just love that heart from whoever.